you got to ask yourself, why are we so interested in things like Russiagate and Pettigate? Why are Americans so engrossed by these stories rather than policy that affects them directly? <laughs> I don't know, I'll just throw that out there. Hi, right? Mark Scott, the reporting. I'm going to take a deep dive into Jeffrey Epstein, hopefully for the last time. God damn, this guy. Uh, so I'll do a little timeline, and um, I, I mean, we are talking about the greatest, <laughs> as I say, why are we so interested in Pettigate and Russiagate, and then I say, okay, we're going to do a full story on Pettigate. <laughs> I don't know, it's, I guess that's, you know, fundamentally American, right? We, lo we love this shit. We love our conspiracy theories. We love our LARPers that chew each other up, attack each other. Like it's high school. <laughs> Kiss and tell. Snitch. <laughs> the world of LARPers, right? The internet LARPers. That's like the new... Uh, those guys are like the new soap opera. You remember, in, you know, on TV there was like some reality and then there was a fucking soap opera. Those are the guys of the soap opera. But this is more, you know, the Pettigate and Russiagate is more fake news, you know. It's, it's a new phenomenon. Very new. Ooh. Or is it? Has it always been fake? Ever since JFK was shot, they blew his brains out and it was a cover-up. There's always so many, so many theories. Uh, so let's talk about, let's talk about the, uh, the rise and fall of Jeffrey Epstein. I'll try to go all the way through it from the beginning to the end quickly. But it's not so boring and not so, so ridiculous. The, the, how the story begins and how the story ends. So Jeffrey Epstein, born June 20th, 1953. A few miles away from here in Brooklyn, New York, Seagate. Seagate, a little gated 50-60% Jewish community with Hasids and, 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 and they live in a nice little gated community. You got you to gotta go through security to get in, right? That's where Jeffrey Epstein grew up. But he went to high school with the real people in Lafayette High School a little closer by, right? So he grows up kind of a normal kid. He's a Jew, little Jewish kid. Gets his ass kicked by the blacks when he tries to go get a Nathan's hot dog, you know, down the block. He's not really allowed to leave the gate unless to go to high school. They probably brought him the high school. I bet the high school that Jeffrey Epstein had had a school bus full of Jewish kids that went to Lafayette High School. And every day, they didn't take the train. Every day, the bus would bring him there to high school, drop him off. And at, at 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, they'd wait and, and they'd get back on the bus and go back to Seagate. That's how Jeffrey Epstein grew up. Right? So, so in, the, in the summer of 1974, he's teaching physics and math at the Dalton School. He likes his little girls. Oh, he likes his little girls. He's teaching physics and math. The, the allegation is that he never graduated college. How the hell did he get the job? No, he's a smart kid. He figured it out. And at Dalton... The most, one of the most important experiences at Dalton was that he meets um, Alan Greenberg, the CEO for Bear Stearns, where he makes his connection into high finance and, uh, you know, a circle of influential, you know, influential Wall Street types. All right, so from 81 to 90, he founds a bunch of um, bogus investment firms with various names on it, Right. His, his objective is to get billionaires, people that have a billion dollars or more, where he doesn't want to talk to them. The allegation there is he's compromising them with child pornography. I, we still have no evidence of that. There's nothing. There's only hearsay. But it does lead to the final, the final act where he's, he's taken out inside of a jail, in a federal jail. So he meets all these rich and powerful people. The, 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 the theory, the, the, the folk tale is that they gave him so much money because he was so smart and so, so financial savvy. And he knew Alan Greenberg at Bear Stearns. And you want to give your money to this guy. He, get, he buys an island, two islands. He has a, a mansion with a, with a runway in, in New Mexico. He's got a house in France. He's got a $77 million mansion in New York. Wow, guys accumulating all kinds of crazy wealth. No one knows how the hell he got any money. Brokers on the street are saying, we never heard of this guy. Who had a fuck? We never cleared. We never traded with. We never did any transactions whatsoever. 
primary or secondary with Jeffrey Epstein. The whole story doesn't, it doesn't equate to, to a hill of beans. Nobody knows how the hell he made his money. Right? And that's all from, from, you know, from 81 to 90, all the way up to 2005. Right? 2004, 3, 2004. Right? He's, a, he's amassing all this crazy amount of wealth. And no one knows how the hell he's getting it. Right? So the allegation there is that he's compromising billionaires. At some point, maybe a handful of billionaires. I talked about it 25 times already. Where he would, he would hold a party on Lolita Island. And the billionaires and there'd be these young girls, you know, walking around, you know, and, and, and uh, he's already tried them. He knows that they're, they're, they're promiscuous or whatever. They've been raped, whatever you want to call it. I, I don't know at this point. Right, but he's got these underage girls prowling the island. And, and one of those billionaires makes a mistake. And pow, the whole thing is worth it. And the next day, that billionaire wakes up after he's... He's, he's been, after he bedded a, a, a 15-year-old and, and, and someone pops up and says, oh, by the way, she's 15. Right? And then the compromise begins, right? So that's, his, that's the theory behind how Jeffrey Epstein made all his money, right? So 2005, March of 2005, first 14-year-old girl accuses him of molestation in Palm Beach, Florida. Ah, now it starts to unfold. Here he is doing his thing, his disgusting pedophilia thing, compromising others who have the same downfall. And now he's accused by a 14-year-old. And there begins the, the molestation story, right? So in June 2000, in June 30th, 2008... Jeffrey Epstein pleads guilty to a lesser crime of solicitation of prostitution and that prostitute being under 18. He gets his sweetheart deal. He gets a sweetheart deal and uh, from uh, Alex Acosta, who is the, he's the, the Homeland, Homeland, Secure, uh, Homeland Housing Director, right? Who he is now. Right? But, but what happens is, <laughs> I just drew off my stride. What happens is, Acosta wasn't the Homeland Director at the time. He was the lead prosecution, the lead prosecutor in the case against Jeffrey Epstein that ultimately resulted in a sweetheart deal that let Jeffrey Epstein off the, off the, uh, off the cuff with 13 weeks of work release where he spent 12 and 15 and 16 hours a day in his luxurious condominium his offices in Palm Beach, West Palm Beach, rather than in jail with the rest of the criminals. Right? Sweetheart deal, Alex Acosta. Alex Acosta ultimately um, resigns. Right? So, July, July 6, 2019. July 6, 2019. Wow, it's not even... It's not even how many, how many days ago? How many? It's not even six weeks. And we're still talking about this. Pow, we, we open up the news. Holy shit, Jeffrey Epstein is, is arrested. On July 6th, two days after Independence Day. It's Independence Day. And, and Epstein goes down for the count. He's in jail. Nobody believes it. Oh, and the whole, all the, the world of Pettigate erupts. Pizza! In the basement of the pizza bar, of fucking kids. <laughs> Jeffrey Epstein is arrested in the world. Everything changes. He's arrested in New Jersey, coming in from France on his private jet. July 12, Ale Alexander Acosta, the guy sitting next to Trump, resigns. He can't take it anymore. Everybody's talking about Epstein. They're not talking about Trump. So he resigns. July, and all right, so he's in jail now. Now he's in jail and. The media is spinning the shit out of it. All right, so July 25th. July 25th. That's now a few weeks ago, three weeks ago. Jeffrey Epstein is choked out at MCC, Metropolitan Correctional Center here in, in New York City, in one of the most notoriously notorious jails for torturing people before their trial. That's the, that's the jail of those who plead 
federal, federal jail of those who plead innocent, not guilty. That's what happens when, you, when, you, when you're innocent. You end up at MCC where they torture you. <laughs> uh, so he ends up there. And um, he's on suicide watch, right? So apparently at, on July 25th, he's choked out. But they say it's a suicide. Oh, it's a suicide. You heard, you heard it's a suicide. Right? He, 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 he has marks on his neck. Now we get no, we have no, now he's in custody. Now he's, see, uh, I want to talk about one, one other thing before I go into the details. Because I had said earlier that there was a higher political conspiracy. That Pettigate would be used as a political football. And I think I was right. I think what happened was that the story went bad. The story went south. I think that the story was that the dirty Democrats, the establishment, was trying to use Epstein and, and link him to Trump. But what they failed to realize was that in doing that, Bill Clinton would also be dragged into the, the, the fray. That Bill Clinton, in fact, was on Jeffrey Epstein's plane 26 times, and Trump was not on his plane at all. Uh, it's never been a Lolita Island. So I think what happened is that the story went south. The idea was to pin, to pin the pedophile on Trump via his, his guy, Alex Acosta, his pick. Right? And it, it went south. Right? So they got to take him out now. Now it's like damage control. That's what I think. Right? I think it was initially a political football and then it went south. Uh, so now, so, so he's choked out in an alleged suicide. They say he's on, he suicided himself. He tried to kill himself. They had choke marks on his neck. And meanwhile, there's a, a fucking, they put him in the same room with some fucking gorilla. Literally. The guy's a monster. He's a killer. Four-time killer. He buried, four, he buried four Mexicans in his backyard. He was a cop. A trained, a trained cop killer. Buried four guys in his yard. This is Eb Jeffrey Epstein's alleged roommate. Coincidence? <laughs> you want to buy a bridge? Uh, so he's 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 allegedly commits suicide, and then the su he's put on suicide watch, 24-hour surveillance, cameras all over the place. Every every wall is a window. People watching you. In your your underwear or paper. Everything is paper. You can't choke yourself. You can't. There's nothing to hook on a noose, nothing. You're going to live out your life whether you like it or not, even miserable. All right? Rubber walls, can't bang your head against the wall, it's probably rubber, cushion, foam. So he's on suicide watch, but he didn't commit suicide. He didn't try. And guess what? His lawyers proved it. His lawyers got him off suicide watch. Or why else? If he, could, if he tried to com commit suicide, why would he be released from suicide watch? He wouldn't. He would be on suicide watch. So evidence suggests that at least as so far as we're told, Jeffrey Epstein is off suicide watch because he didn't try to kill himself. Somebody else did. Somebody choked him out. The gorilla, the, the fucking killer did it. Right? And then when they asked the killer, hey, would you do it? I don't know. I don't know. What? Who? Me? I don't know nothing. No. <laughs> Jeffrey Epstein. I don't know anything about the guy. Oh, me? I didn't do it. What, me? I me? No, I was uh, I was over there. I didn't I didn't do. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, so they, that's that's the story they bought on Jeffrey Epstein, on on Nick Tataglione. Hey, Nick Tataglione. That's his name, Nick Tataglione. The dirty cop who's facing the death penalty for killing four Mexicans in a botched drug dealer drug deal, while he's a cop. Uh, so. So there you go. So he's on suicide watch. On August 10, 2019, Jeffrey Epstein is found dead in his cell. Dead in his cell. Quote, dead in his cell. I mean, you know, I, I know that there's people that will, will never accept the fact that he's dead, that he is in a, he's on a kibitz, a kibbutz or whatever in Israel. He's sipping martinis. He's, he's still doing his thing. He's living on the beach in Tel Aviv or wherever the hell he is, right? Not tell you, you know what I'm talking about. He's he's in Israel, right? You can't you can't you can't prosecute a Jew. <laughs> he's Mossad. They got him out. The CIA got him out. He's a trans. He's a he's an informant. He's a he's an asset. 
Uh, so for people that believe that, not to say that there is a Mossad, not to say that there isn't assets, and that the deep state does exist, but you have to have evidence and proof. You can't, it can't be a default. That can't always be your default charge. Oh, he's a Mossad, he got away with it. Well, where's the evidence? There has to be some kind of evidence, some kind of paper trail, something that we could put our finger on before we say he's not dead. Now, the evidence leans towards dead. We have an autopsy, allegedly. Now, I haven't seen it. You haven't seen it. If you want to see it, then you could go get it. It's at, uh, I, actually, you can't get it. But it's at, the autopsy is being held at the Chief Medical Examiner, 421 East 26th Street, um, only next of kin, according to the website, can see the site, can see the autopsy. In some states, anybody can order it. In New York, apparently, you have to be next of kin. So they're holding in the autopsy. We have to rely on fake news to, to uh, I guess, somebody gets it or the lawyers release it. I have not seen the autopsy. If anybody has it, if anybody can locate a PDF, a clean PDF file of Jeffrey Epstein's autopsy, send it to me, shorthappylifegmail.com. We'll bring Dr. John on. We'll talk about it. I, I have not seen the actual autopsy. I'm only going on what we're told. Uh, official narrative. Uh, so in that autopsy, we're told that he has a broken neck bone. Many broken neck bones. The, the hyoid bone right here. Very, very... Only breaks when you strangle yourself. Not only, but most of the time. Like 80% of the time when the hyoid bone is broken, it's strangulation. Tw and only 20% of the time or less, is it suffocation. So the, the, the allegation is that he hooked his bed sheet to the top bunk in a cell where there's nothing that you could hook anything to, where the, the quality of the bedding is paper that probably wouldn't hold your weight anyway, and that he leaned forward with a, noose, a makeshift noose on his neck and suffocated himself. That's the story, the official story, and that the fucking monster, Tataglione, is out of the picture. We don't even know. Why is, first of all, why is Jeffrey Epstein in a cell with bunk beds, and why is he spending 12 hours a day, we're told, 12 hours a day, again, sitting in a room with his attorneys and a young girl who sometimes is in the room with him by himself, right? By himself in a locked room with a, with a young girl. What kind, of, what kind of fucking story is this? What the hell is going on? Who is allowed that kind of privilege? It leads you to believe that he's paying everybody off. Everybody is getting paid. The guards are getting paid. This one's getting paid. That one's getting paid. But eventually his number ran out. Now, you could make an argument, well, he's buying everybody, he's paying everybody off, he paid to get out. Okay. Okay. So then the whole New York City Medical Examiner's Office, all the, all the, the fire department and EMTs, they're all lying. They're all lying. There's not a single person coming forward saying, that wasn't Jeffrey Epstein's body, that was a rubber fucking dummy. With an Epstein mask. Oh, no, no, that wasn't Epstein's body. That was some other guy. We fucking picked the guy up on the street and and that's that's who we brought into the hospital, Epstein mask. None of that shit is coming coming through. So if you want to believe that at that point he paid his way out, come up with just a little bit of evidence. Because right now it's it's all it's ninety-eight percent. Nick Taglione, the hitman, the cop, the four-time killer on death row, sitting next to him, choked him out, or gave him a good swift fucking cunt kick punch right in his hoyard bone, and shut him up. They, were, they, they said they heard screaming, so maybe he wrestled him to the ground. Maybe, maybe, you know, and the other thing is that the idea that Jeffrey Epstein killed himself Originally was reported that he was miserable, that everybody in MCC is miserable, they're suffering.
But Jeffrey Epstein, according to his attorneys, was in good spirits. He believed he was going to beat the rap. He was going to get out of it. That's what he told. That's how he felt. He was like, no, 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 I'm going to get out of this. I don't know. Fucking, I'm going to get out of it. I'm going to get the same kind of deal I got in Florida. He believed that, according to the reports. So, the idea that Epstein committed suicide is, is, is slim when you consider, when you weigh that evidence, that his lawyers thought he was going to get out. Right? When the lawyers all along, no, he's not getting out. Not, not fucking possible. This, the deck was stacked too high against him and no bail. And he's sitting in jail. No bail. Right? So, right, again, his attorney stated that he was in good spirits. We heard screams from the cells. The guards, all of the guards, no video surveillance. There's no, no video evidence. It was stated by MCC, MCC that there is no video of the, of the incident. In a 24-hour lockdown watch, 100% guarantee that there was video evidence of that scene. That we will never see. At 100%. My shoes are getting wet right now because I'm walking <laughs> in the wet grass. <laughs> it's beautiful in New York. It's actually very humid and, and overcast, but it's bearable as opposed to the sweltering heat of like Coney Island yesterday. I know you guys love Coney Island. It's very scenic and beautiful, but man, is that place hot. I don't know why. There's no trees. There's no wind. It's crowded. It's not my kind of beach, man. I was out of there. The water isn't exactly clean and beautiful. The water in Coney Island is actually polluted. Because it's in a bay. It's in this, this harbor right here. It's right at the... Coney Island is literally, you know, less than four or five miles right there. Through the harbor. And it's, it's, it's historically polluted. <laughs> Still. So anyway, the guards. Let's talk about the guards, and then and then I'll try to sum it sum it up. So the guards are they're not there. They were let go. They they had um they they were sleeping. One of them wasn't even a correction officer. All the stories we heard, right? That that uh, the the attorney said it was Nick Nick Tataglione choked out Epstein. How the hell did that happen when there was? When he was supposed to be on 24-hour watch, why is why does he have bunk beds in his room? Right? Nothing in those cells can 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 justify the way they explain that he died, where he tied on tied a noose to the bunk, the top bunk, and choked himself. Show us a picture. We have no the the official narrative, no pictures, no video, no statement, no. I mean, usually when someone chokes you out in a jail. That person is brought into court and tried on new crimes. So if Tataglione choked him, where's that? Where's that trial? Where is that? Where is that? Where? Why aren't the lawyers, you know, bringing that case to, to, to trial? Where's the prosecution in that? Right, you might want to ask yourself, right? So they weren't doing their rounds, right? You heard. The, the, the guards didn't do their rounds. They, they fudged the numbers. So there's a lot, of, a lot of speculation right there that gives the killer the opening to kill Jeffrey Epstein. Right? That's my assessment so far. That Jeffrey Epstein was murdered in his cell by Nick Tataglione or somebody else. Somebody, but the bottom line is somebody came in there and choked this guy out and killed him and then left the noose around his neck in a makeshift giving the medical examiner enough evidence to say oh yeah the medical the medical examiner is not law enforcement they're required to listen to the testimony of law enforcement oh yeah the the, the jail says they had a noose around his neck they found him with a noose around his neck oh so that means he must have tried to hang himself right so just a brief on the autopsy is that what we know, based on not seeing the autopsy, is that the opinion, the doctor's opinion in an autopsy, the autopsy is a finding of facts. I, I'm no expert, but, and I, but I've seen them. It's a, it's a finding of facts, 
And then at the end, this toxicology, there should be. Was he on any medications? Because I'd like to know. Any at all. Right? Was he taking anything? Any spooky, psychotrophic, anything at all? Any happy pill? Right? And at the end of that autopsy is an opinion. A, I guess a diagnosis. All doctors' diagnoses are just opinion. There is no fact. Doctors get it wrong all the time. They diagnose you with cancer and, 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 and you, you live another 35 years. They give you six months to live, you live another 200 years. And vice versa. They say, oh, there's no cancer and you die next week. So doctors are not, are not 100%. So the opinion of the doctor is nothing more than an opinion. It's as good as any other opinion. <laughs> Educated opinion. Which we will see as the, as the document hopefully hits the, the mainstream. Uh, a lot of those things have stamped on it. Do not, do not reprint. But we need to get a reliable eye on that autopsy to see. Well, we already know. that We already know the line. It's going to say, uh, diagnoses, uh, asphyxiation of the neck, brought on by hanging, uh, means uh, uh, suicide. That's what it's going to say. But it doesn't, it doesn't include the facts that I told you that 80% of the time when the hyoid bone is broken, it's strangulation. So, so Marcus Conti reporting on, I hope I got all the facts. I probably left a lot of stuff out. Uh, on Jeffrey Epstein. Does the, does the information still, now that he is, I believe, dead, was murdered by Nick the Taglione, where is the evidence, where is that trove of evidence of the compromised billionaires? Is there motive for compromised billionaires to kill Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> of course. Is there motive for political political types, governors and ex-presidents and current presidents, is there any motive to take out Jeffrey Epstein? <laughs> of course there is. Is there any motive to... Right? So much motive. There's motive all over the place. Uh, so... To the victims, we forget about the victims when we're talking about this, right? We're so we're so hell bent on getting the getting the big guys, right? Taking down a big fish who are abusing these kids, and that's a good thing. But there are victims, and there's a whole lot of them. There's hundreds and hundreds of you know teenage girls, children from 13 to 16 who are abused by these fucking monsters. Let's not forget that. Hopefully, this this story. This, uh, these incidences, these occurrences, put an end to some of that? Or does it just give cover? Does it just give cover to the, to the billionaires? I don't know. If I were a billionaire and I was a child molester and suddenly Jeffrey Epstein, the alleged billionaire, is in jail and he gets choked to death and killed and tortured... I might think twice about doing something like that again. I might have to give up my, my, my fetish for children. So there may be some good news that comes out of Epstein, some sort of, some sort of awakening, I guess, you know. So what else? So, so that is the story. This is the story of the most notorious... The most notorious uh, child molester, serial child molester in the history of America, Jeffrey Epstein, who dies one night in a jail cell, choked out by a, by a killer, by a, by a trained assassin. And there and there goes the story. Will we ever see the evidence? There will be no trial. Why? Because the guy's dead. Right? Exit stage left. Epstein out of the school play. Will we ever see that evidence? You're more likely to see the, a videotape of Jeffrey Epstein hanging himself in the cell than you are of, you know, evidence dug up. The FBI was already down there on Lolita Island. They covered the island. You think we're going to see that evidence? I'm still waiting. How about you? Did you see anything? I thought the FBI was down Jeffrey Epstein's place. Yeah. 
Well, the story dies here, you know. Again, we've been hoodwinked. We've been conditioned to follow these stupid stories one after another. We talk about it like it means something. Like this is the big move. Oh no, we're going to get him now. We got him. Oh, we got him. Oh, it's Trump's guys. It's the Q guys. They're moving in on him. Oh shit, the deep state. They're draining the swamp. You see it? There's the fucking swamp. You know, or it's, oh no, it's, it's, <clears throat> it's Antifa. They're moving in. They're going to, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to get rid of Trump. It's all Trump. They got the shit on Trump. He's a child molester. They're going to remove Trump from office. It's the Clintons. The Clintons in the other room. They're fucking Hillary Clinton tied the noose on his neck. Uh, we love these stories. Instead, instead of instead of talking about what matters to the American people, which is a system of government that is of the people, by the people, for the people, that provides for the people. That's what politics is all about. It's just that we, we're we're in a, we're in a, an environment where wherever those issues are talked about, some billionaire will allocate a billion dollars to change the narrative and make you talk about the circus instead of the fact that they don't pay tax, they never pay tax, they, they rip you off, they have a socialized system of handouts at the government level, all that go to the 1% and 99% of the people are, are stuck with a co combative, competitive form of cutthroat capitalism where you never, you, the, more you, the more you try, the more they choke out the regular people. We're being choked out, but people would rather talk about Jeffrey Epstein being choked out than you being choked out at the, um, you know, at the at the uh, at when you get your paycheck. Right? Half the country can't take a vacation. Eighty percent of the country live in paycheck to paycheck. Sixty percent of the country is uh, doesn't have four hundred dollars to their name. We need we need a we need leadership in this country that pushes the ball forward. And here we go. I say Bernie, you say Kami. I say Bernie, you say Kami. Conti, you're, you're delusional. You're living in a fantasy world. You believe. Oh, you believe in your heart. It's so, it's so warm and compassionate. And so, it's so endearing to watch Conti talk about how, how, Paul, how Bernie Sanders is going to come in and, and save us from, from the evil empire. From the oligarchs. Oh, it's so... I, I tune in just to hear Conti say, Bernie! <laughs> right? That's what you think. That's, you know... That is, there is... There is... There is a broken financial system That's that, that we revealed to you if you were paying attention to Occupy Wall Street. And it has not changed one iota. <laughs> it's gotten worse. Right? And unless you fix that system, unless you have a voice at the helm that tells, that continues to tell the people about that broken system, about the bankers not paying banking tax, right, stealing all of the money, all of the treasure, 90, you know, 90 percent of all new wealth goes to the top one percent. Trillions of dollars being stolen out of your pocket from parasitic corporations. That's the real story. That's what Pedigate hides. That's what Russiagate hides. That's what these that's what these tabloid stories cover. Bam man, is it interesting trying to figure out if Jeffrey Epstein hung himself or was choked out by some goon. But try to figure out how come how come how come a guy can a guy named Jeff Jeff Bezos can accumulate hundred and twenty five billion dollars and doesn't pay any tax? And has all the advantages to his favor that gives $600 million a year to the CIA. Well, the CIA gives him $600 million to, to use the, the Washington Post as a mouthpiece. You ask yourself, how does that happen in this country? I'll see, no, it's a sign of a great country. We have a great country. Anybody can do that. <laughs> it's, that's called selling the dream. There's... there's there's, there's a, that's a one in a trillion chance that you will be Jeff Bezos. What would you rather do? A one in a trillion. I'll give you. I'll, I'll leave you on this. What would you rather have? One in a trillion. 
right? That's that's the odds. One in a trillion that you could be Jeff Bezos, or a one in a one in three chance that you could have a, a decent life in America, where you could buy a house and you could you could take. Have a sigh of relief. You can change jobs. You have you're covered with health care. Everything is going to be okay, as long as you continue to you know do your part. So one in three that you can have a decent life in America, or one in a trillion you could be Jeff Bezos. Which one would you pick? Okay. Because if you pick the one in a trillion and you lose, then everything stays the same and gets worse, and the trillion the billionaires get richer, or you could go for maybe a one in two, one in three chance. And the closer Bernie Sanders gets to the White House, it goes down to one to one and a half percent. What would you pick? I mean, I know what I would pick. I already picked it. Marcus Conti reporting.